beautiful day today. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. So, um, you know, we we just want to begin, amen, because we are, it's like I'm always running over time. So I'm trying to keep keep up with the time here. So I am going to ask our dear Pastor Brian, could you just open up for us in prayer? Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning again, everyone. Let's just bow our hearts as we look to Praise our heavenly God. Father. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, the source of our strength, the God of our salvation, we come to worship you, we come to praise you, we come to offer oh, yeah. and yeah. gratitude for you, our God. Thanking you for our life that indeed you have spared to see another day, a day that we'll never see again. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all the provision. We thank you, Lord, for just basking in your newness of your mercies again another day and your everlasting. Oh, yeah. and Father, as we come to embark on this journey in your word, we pray, oh God, for a Sunday school teacher. We pray for everyone that will zoom on to hear a word from you today. Father, we pray that you will just open up our darkest understanding, that we'll hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church today. Bless our teacher today. Bless our hearts. And we so desire to hear from you and to learn something more deeper and wider. And we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful platform. We thank you, Lord, for this ministry, Deacon, Deacon, Deacon Bird, Sister Samantha, who made it possible. And Father, we just want to thank you and praise you and give you all the glory as we so desire to hear from you today. Have your way today. And we welcome your presence among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Brian. Praise the Lord. And let me say good morning again to each and everyone who is joining us on Zoom, our pastor, our bishop, and their families. And we just want to welcome our other listeners who each Sunday morning devote their time, precious time, to join us in this, uh, our, our worship. And so we, we just want to thank God for you. And we just want to welcome you and hope that you will be blessed from our service today. Praise the Lord. We know that God has kept us over the past. And you know, beloved ones, we are so thankful to him. We owe him all the thanks and the gratitude. Praise the Lord. Last week, we had a very interesting and a, a very good scripture, our, our, our Sunday school lesson going, the ordination of Aaron and his son. And it was a blessed time when, and it was also a, a time of preparation it was also a very unique time, a very unique, um, very unique instructions that God gave to Moses for Aaron and his son. And we went through that last week and, you know, how Moses carried out that task. And they were anointed priests, high priests and priests to serve the people of God. And this week, we continue on that same trend, only that we have, you know, a very sad note in that same joyous occasion last week. We have a very sad uh, scripture this week and the topic of our lesson this week is death of Nadab and Abihu those were the two sons of Aaron whom last week we studied that they were ordained priests to carry out God's work and our lesson text is taken from Leviticus 10, 1 through 7, 
The related scriptures are 1 Samuel 2, 12 to 17, Joshua 7, 1 to 20, Acts 5, 1 to 11, and Psalm 2, 10 to 12. The golden text is taken from Psalm 2, verse 11. And the words are, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And I cannot see who and who is there. But um, Sister Samantha, are you there? Yes, Minister Bird, I'm here. Okay, good morning. Um, mm -hmm. Could you please read through Leviticus 10, 1 through 7 for us? Okay. And Nahab and Habihu, the son of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incest thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishael and Elizaphan, the sons of Uzil, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, and Moses, as Moses had said. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons, uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest he die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord had kindled. Seven. And he shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest he die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you, and they did according to the word of Moses. Here ended the reading of the word, we honor it by saying, glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, where without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Samantha. And we look at the introduction on, on the, the same page, the, the next page. And I think it would be maybe interesting to read a little of it. Many people fail to fully grasp how seriously God takes sin. He expects us to obey him at all times in all situations. The commands of God should not be seen as arbitrary or simple as a random list of rules. God did not give us the Bible so we would have a religious rule book, but rather so that we could know how to know and love him. God calls us into his service. And he knows what is best for us. He wants us to serve him and him alone. The result of this is that we are bound to look different from the world, from the world we live in. We might appear to be strange and peculiar to those around us. And they may consider our worship of the Lord to be bizarre. But we must keep in mind that God does not delight in putting us in circumstances where he appears to be odd, where we appear to be odd. It is just that 
he has a different set of priorities than the world does. This week lesson showed the danger of trying to circumvent God's purposes. Some people want to serve God, but they want to do so in their own way. This will never work. God knows what is best, and he calls for us to serve him in faithful obedience. And I think this was very interesting. And the lesson outline we have, the fire of the Lord. And that is from uh, 1 to 3, and our service to the Lord. Four and five, the call of the Lord. Uh, that's six to seven, and we turn around to our uh, twenty-four in our book. Last week lesson we learned about God's holiness from Leviticus eight one to thirteen. We discovered that biblical holiness requires a thorough understanding of God's requirements. The right moves on the, 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 right, the right motives on behalf of the believer and complete obedience in following God's instruction. So this was what we learned last week about God's holiness, biblical holiness, how God went step by step with Moses to prepare his people for service in his, uh, in his sanctuary. Um, and so it is saying today we are turning to a much different story that presents important insights and God's holiness through death of Nabal and Abihu. As disturbing as the episode is in Israel history, we will find amazingly relent, relevant theological truth that we can carry into our everyday life. So as sad as this story is, and seems very, you know, unusual. But when we study it, it will benefit us as believers in serving the Lord, our God. And our today's aim, we look at to learn the important aspects of God's holiness from the negative example of Aaron's son. And to note numerous potential consequences of disregarding God's holiness and failing to obey his command. And we apply it by to ensure that our personal holiness is incomplete alignment with the principles of scripture and that we are serving the Lord in a manner and he and in a manner that he desires. So what we are uh, what we are seeing here is that we our our lives, our life style, our holy uh, personal life should be in alliance with the word of God, should comply to the word of God. Okay, we move on to um, a little more down here. The early portions of scripture present an historical account of God's dealing with the nation of, nation of Israel. There are many dis dissimilarities between the nation of Israel and the church. God required the Israelites to follow the Mosaic law, whereas the church is not bound by the law. And we have our supporting scriptures. We have Romans 6, 
14 and 16, and you could read that to verify what, 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 what was said. And we also have Galatians 3, 23 to 25. Israel was designated to occupy a geographic location known as the land of Canaan, whereas the church is scattered throughout the world among Jews and Gentiles, with each individual believer indwelled by Christ. And we also have our supporting scripture, Colossians 1, verse 27. Yet, amid the dissimilarities, striking similarities between Israel and the church cannot be ignored. Just as Israel was God's people in the Old Testament era, and the primary vehicle God was using in the world, the church is God's people today, and is the primary vehicle God is using at this time. Also, New Testament believers find that the written text of the Old Testament is relevant to living life God's way. So what the writer was saying is that although um, Israel was speaking of a geographical uh, location where God um, prepared this land of Israel, I mean this land of Canaan for them to go, the church is a similar, I mean, and they should obey the, the rules of God, the Mosaic rules and laws. The church is scattered abroad. The church does not um, stop in one location in Canaan. The church is scattered abroad. Yet the same requirements that God had for Israel is the same requirement that God is expecting for the church. The same vehicle that he used, the same method that he used, or similar methods that he used to, to, to govern Israel. The church is governed by the word of God and the rules of God and the holiness of God. And so um, we notice here that um, uh, Leviticus 10, 1 to 7 stands in a sad contrast to uh, chapter 8, 1 to 13 that teaches through negative example important aspects of God's holiness. The lesson text sets forth the consequences of disregarding God's holiness and disobeying his holiest command. However, there are three underlying concepts related to God's holiness that can be discerned from the text as well as biblical holiness is clearly communicated, necessarily to serve God and uh, unrelenting in nature. And so we have the three aspects, or the three parts of it is, number one, we have God's judgment, which is uh, Leviticus 10, 1 to 3. And then we have God's wrath affect others, four through five. And we have negative examples, um, uh, Leviticus 10, six to six and seven. So here we notice that God's holiness is very important and very and is expected in each believer to comply to the holiness of God, to respect and honor 
the holiness and the rules and the laws of God. And when we go to the lesson, we notice something here that causes these two young men to lose their lives. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of their, of then his senses, put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. So here we see these two priests. This was not their duty. They were only priests. They, this was the duty of the high priest. And when I go further into uh, other the scriptures, then you notice that they were not even given that command. That command was not even given yet. And so what they did was take it upon themselves to put incense in their senses and put fire on them and go into where they should not have gone and offer up sacrifice. Offer up a strange fire. The Bible called strange fire before the Lord. And he did not command them to do. So what we see there is these two young men disobeyed the voice of God. Disobeyed the command of God. They did not, if, 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 if you notice last week when Moses was giving them the command, Moses did not mention when I, when, I, when I read it, then I went back, I went back to chapter 8. I went back to the lesson last week and I did not see anywhere where those what they did was mentioned when God told Moses to gather the things, gather the, you know, the aprons, gather the, the, the belt, gather all the things and bring them to the sanctuary and bring the young men to the sanctuary along with, with Aaron. We didn't see any, that, that command was not there. And so they took it upon themselves to do that. And it cost them their lives. Any? Okay, brethren, I that's open for comment or anybody? Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry to be late. Yes, but um, we see that um. Moses did warn Aaron, and he told Aaron that um, um, the commandment of God should be obeyed because God is a holy God. And whatever God says, whatever commands he gives, he wants his people to carry out his commands. So he didn't, Moses didn't go straight to Aaron's son because Aaron is a high priest. So he told Aaron so that Aaron could, you know, give the word out to the people just to remind them of the holiness of God. Now, these two young priests, his sons, I don't know what they were thinking, but if you are serving God, even in today's world, if you are serving God, you should come as holy because we are reading the scripture and the scripture is telling us that God is holy. Mm -hmm. And if we are not holy, we, we definitely cannot please God. So it is for us to look into what took place in those days and to see how we should come up higher, you know, and conform to 
the holiness of God, because that is very important. Without that, we are far off. Very far very off. off. Thank you very much, Pastor. Anybody else? I would just like to piggyback from what our pastor Spence said and just up to, to add. We, we can look and see the, the character or the characteristic of God and we can make it applicable to Romans 6.23 where it says, For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That is in the New Testament church. Now, I can also look at the fact that, that, that just because it's, it's, it's Sunday school, I can say, well, maybe Aaron's two sons, maybe, you know, were not, well taught in the oracles of God. And so when you look at the word strange fire, the word strange being unauthorized. Unauthorized. So maybe mm. they did not know and they were just doing, thinking that they were doing something that would bring a sacrifice to God, no, not knowing that God is jealous and he doesn't want anything that, that comes before him or whatever it is. So I can look at this from different perspectives saying maybe their intentions were good, but they were not authorized to do that type of sacrifice and they, they were incorrect and thinking that what they were doing were right you, you follow what i'm saying I, I just want to bring that to, to, to the forefront in terms of them bringing from the priest lineage not knowing we we're not taught yes okay. Pastor Brian. Um, just another opinion on that um, if you don't mind good morning everybody god bless good you all. Um, you see yeah, I just want to add that whenever the priests and the Levites were ordained, these were ordained people. And you're not going to ordain people without giving them the law and the, the role of their offices. That's basic. And Moses did that. We know how diligent God is in breaking these things down. Yes. But we realize too that at least they they were trying to operate out, outside of their role and responsibility. And we find that this happened oftentimes in many places. And not just that they were operating outside of their role and responsibility, they were also introducing strange things and offering it as unto the Lord. God said in his word in Exodus that he's a jealous God. Mm -hmm. And these are things that profane the, the, the holiness of the principle in which things should be done. And that's why God was furious about it. And you could see that they were well learned because in truth and in fact, why would you ordain somebody and set them in place um, and do not give them the ritual and the commands of God? That was diligently done, but this was stubbornness, self-willness, and this they did on their purpose. They tried to work out their own thing rather than following the laws and the commandments of God's word through Moses and Aaron. So self will get in the way sometimes just to work a thing out. They were young, yes, but that does not make them excuses, but they should abide with the commands of the priesthood and the order of the tabernacle. Thank you, Bishop. Yeah, you know, sometimes um, people go ahead because they are in certain position, they just think it's okay to go ahead and do whatever. Even in our present churches. But we notice that during the time when Moses were preparing you know, and, and if we go through, um, especially the book of Leviticus, say from the first chapter, we will see how God would still carefully instruct Moses. He carefully instruct Moses and Moses would listen. And what sometimes when I, I said, but Moses don't even question God. You don't even say, you know, what and what and what, as we would, you know, try to counteract and we would try to interact and we would try. Moses didn't question. Moses just go ahead, humbly do what God commanded him to do. And as Bishop rightly said, um, 
they would not have been ordained if they did not fully know, fully inform their duties and, you know, what they should and should not do. So I think, I think maybe they were just disobedient or unruly or wayward or whatever adjective you would want to put there to call them, you know, but they were not very good listeners. I, I think they were not very good listeners. They tried to do their own thing. And sometimes we do that too. We come out of boundaries. We, you know, in the New Testament church, we feel like, you know, we, God's grace is there. God's mercy is there. And so sometimes we do some presumptuous things and saying, well, you know, God will have mercy and God will forgive and God will. But there are consequences to our deeds. There are consequences to our behavior. And these were some of the consequences that fall upon these two young men. Yeah, because we must also remember that it wasn't Moses or Aaron who chose who, who chose those guys. You know, it was God's doing. And and Moses made it known to the people and to them that it was God, that it wasn't his doing, it was God's I, doing. I, so maybe these guys, you know, maybe they had a little, you know, thing that, you know, because they are chosen by God to do, they could get away with certain things. Get um, away with certain things. But then, you see, what, and what they did maybe fail to re realize, what we should realize, they fail to realize that God is no respecter of persons. Yes. Even though Moses and Aaron were brothers, and Moses was God's spokesperson, you know? Right. And Aaron was the high priest, and I am the, the, the sons of Aaron and the brother of Moses, who God has in his bosom. I can do anything. Yeah. But what God said, no, no, yeah. you got you got to obey me. Yes. It's not about Moses and your father. It's about me and doing what I want to be done. And sometimes our children think they can live off our salvation. <laughs> can I just say something there, Minister? Uh, you know, just what, what, what Pastor mentioned, and it just came to my thought. You, you know, yes. and, and this goes back to the two sons of um, Eli. In, Eli. In the right, right. right. I, I mean, yes. you, know, you know, they had gotten the warning from their father saying, listen, what you guys are doing is profaning the ministry. What you guys are doing is, 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 is not right in the sight of God. Yes. And so the reality is that we know that, that, that they died in the battle with the Philistines. But the reality is that when it comes to sin, I mean, they, they, they still won payment and the wage of sin is death. That, that's 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 the bottom line. So whether you you, you related to the bishop or the pastor, you related to the priest. The, yeah. the, 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 the penalty for sin does not change from the Old Testament, you know, versus the New Testament. It's it, it, it's mandated for us as a people because God is holy. Without holiness, no man shall okay. see God. Yeah. Yes, so we see, Thank you. Minister. We also see play out on the job, you know, because. People were a regular worker and they get a position as a supervisor, but mm -hmm. there is still a boundary for the supervisor. They can't cross a certain boundary. Exactly. Because they are a supervisor now. They think that they can overstep, they can treat, they can do anything and get away with it because you know they have a a, a, a little and authority. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so they sometimes they find themselves in trouble. So it is with these two guys. <laughs> Yes. And the same thing from Eli Reb, that, that's basically what happened. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. So, so can we move on to uh, God's wrath affect others? So you see, you see, um, Pastor Brian quote the scripture, the wages are uh, Romans um, um, 6. 
6.23, the wages of sin is death. And we see that, that it did not affect just one person. It affects other people along the line. And we have scriptures that we could refer back to that sin, disobeying God's rules, does not only affect you, but it affects others coming down the line behind you. So we notice here the judgment of God. And so um, we have uh, um, God's wrath effect. We have a second aspect of disobeying God's holiness stands in that standard is that God's righteous wrath will have an effect on others connected to the situation. Neighbor and Abinu were consumed in flame. Family members were charged with carrying out smoldering dead bodies from the tabernacle. This is a reminder that disobedience often brings forth consequences that affect more than one, more than the offering, the offending party alone. So we notice that after the death of these two young men, and I, there is a, a, a clause in verse 3 that was in verse, uh, in, in, in chapter 8, that Moses brought back. He said, um, and Moses said unto Aaron, this is that the Lord spake, saying, I will sanctify in them that come unto me before all the people I will be glorified. And if we remember going back to, to, to last week's lesson, Moses brought that to Aaron during the charge. During the charge, he said, this is that which the Lord, this is the thing which the Lord commanded to be done. In other words, these are the instructions that the Lord gave me to give you. Yes? And so, if we go back to some of our um, underlining scriptures, we will find, um, for instance, in 1 Samuel 2, verse 12 to 17, we notice that um, something happened here. Let me look at Joshua. Joshua 1, 7, verse 1 to 20. Remember when Joshua um, sent the spies to view out Ai. And God told them that when they, when they, they, they should not destroy, that they should not take any of the accursed things. They should not take any of the accursed things after the destruction of Jericho. And so, we notice that Achan took some of the accursed things and um, Jericho the, and, and Joshua, they lost the battle because sin entered into the camp. And we noticed that the consequences for that was that Achan was brought out when Moses went on, when Joshua went and searched the camp. Um, Achan was brought out and his entire family, that entire family was destroyed. So the writer is saying sin it, it did not only affect Nadab and his, I mean, I mean, and Nadab and Abinu, but it affected other family members. Because when they brought the bodies out, they could not even mourn. And, um, I, and it said that um, family members were charged with carrying their smoldering dead bodies from the tabernacle. This is a reminder that disobedience often brings consequences. Okay, I said that. Earlier. And so they 
were not even allowed to mourn. We look at the negative example. It's the third result of violating God's holiness is that those who do so become examples of what not to be done. In the case of Aaron's son, their family was told, uncover not your head. And we notice that when you are mourning, if you remember, we talked about um, Esther and Mordecai. And Mordecai, in his mourning uh, position, he put sackcloth and put all kind of things on him to show that he's really mourning, he's really grieving. But here God told, um, uh, 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 he said, uncover not your head, neither when your clothes, lest he die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. Hear the Lord command Moses' family, Aaron's family, not to grieve. An important lesson was being taught. So, beloved ones, can you imagine you have family members die and you were not allowed to grieve. And in past times, you would tie your head with something and go out on the street and cry and bawl and mourn. And people would know that you were grieving. People would know that something happened in the family. And here, there was a command made not to do that. Um, and so I am going to throw it out as to why do you think God made that kind of a command? I'll be the first to go finish if you don't mind. I think we show, when we mourn, we are showing sympathy, we are showing empathy, we are showing pity. But mm -hmm. when God, who is the supreme, takes his action. We cannot show empathy, sympathy, nor pity. We have to honor God's ruling and God's judgment in that he is eternal. He is the one who does all things. I heard somebody preach one time and he said, if your mother died, when you get to heaven and you may not meet, meet your mother in glory, you can't blame God. You can't show piety, oh, my mother didn't make it in. All that you have to do is to glorify God in that his judgment and his selection is final. So what a thing, pity would show that, you know, I, 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 God shouldn't do that. Empathy would show, yes, I sympathize with him in a personal way. Pity would show how broken you are because of God's judgment. But when God does things all together, he's all together lovely. So wherever he does his things, we have to glorify him by not mourning, by not showing empathy and pity, but letting the justness of God prevail. Thank you, Bishop. And in addition to that, Bishop, I think Aaron learned his lessons very well. Because after all, Aaron should be the one who was mourning and Aaron didn't say a thing. Aaron didn't say anything. Um, verse 3 said, then Moses said unto Aaron, uh, no, verse 4, and Moses called, oh, where is that now? Verse, okay, verse 6, and Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Israel, Tamar, his son, and, no, Paul, I missed that, that, um, but Aaron, after the death of the son, Aaron didn't really say anything, Aaron keep his mouth closed. 
I think he was trying. I think he was trying to make excuses for them. I, I think. Right, but what he did, but you know, he didn't say anything <laughs> because he knew. I think Aaron knew too that what the boys did was wrong, and it was God's judgment mm. that had fallen upon them. And so maybe if he were were was there making excuse, the judgment of God would have maybe fallen upon him also. Mm. But if, if, you, if you look, if you look in, in the context of, of the priest um, Eli, when he heard the news that his two son, um, you know, Phineas and um, the other one, they were died. Seen, yes. When he heard, yes, when he heard the news, it, the Bible said that he was on a, in, on a chair and he fell back and broke his neck. And, right. and, and so it, it, the news, it, it, you know, when you look at Aaron, okay, he held his peace. And Eli, it, 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 it's such an impact that, that you know, he, he fell off his seat. Even though I would say both of them, you know, knew the, the, the Mosaic law as it relates to mourning. So the parallel here is, is how do we respond when, 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 when God does something and then how do we respond based on what was in, in required or constituted in the law at that time? Yeah. yeah, but you see with Eli again, um, you see with Eli again, his two sons died, he, he might have accepted that, and so, but when he heard that the ark of God was taken, because that was the, the, the direct presence of God. Okay. You know, that's what it's, you heard that thing, you know, the, the battle, the, the two boys died, it's the child, the premature child, and the ark, which was the presence of God, was taken away from Israel. So he realized, well, you know, yeah, the presence of God is not there anymore. What? So the Bible said he fell off his chair and broke his neck. But sin has consequences. That's the bottom line. Yes, that's it. The bottom line is sin has consequences. And sometimes we go around and you tell people, you know, you, you try to witness to them and they will tell you, oh, you know, well, God, oh, that was Old Testament days. And God is not going to make his people and turn around and destroy them. Or God understands. Yes, I God understand, and we find a hundred and one different excuses to make, not remembering that what He says in His Word, that's what He means. God is a holy God. And over in the introduction, Mother, mm. it, it tells us here that many people fail to fully grasp how seriously God takes sin. Exactly. He expects us to obey him at all times, in all situations. All situations. Yeah. You see, and, and that is what that is what we are this is what we are we are going and even sometimes Christians resort to that. Ha, huh, God understands. Oh you know I can pray. What we forget that God is still a consuming fire and God will judge us according to our sin. God's holiness and the consequences that ensure from obedience are reaffirmed in the psalmist injunction to serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Psalm 2 verse 11. That's what we have to do. Serve the Lord with fear, knowing that God is a holy God. And had it not been that Jesus came and gave himself a sacrifice for our sins, you and I would not have this access. Amen. Because we could not approach God. And that and, 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 and these these sacrifices and these ordinances, they were substitutes pointing toward the coming of Christ, the time when Christ would come into the world to redeem us. 
what we what what we should not we should not play around with God's grace and God's goodness and God's mercy. Sometimes we play around with it. Okay. So any question, any more questions? That we are going to any more questions, any more comments, any more Okay, and so we notice that um, verse 7 said, and he shall not go out. These were the instructions that Moses gave unto Aaron and unto Eleazar and unto Ithamar, his sons. And cover not your head, neither rend your clothes lest he died, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord hath kindled. And he shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest he die. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according as the word of Moses. And so here we find after the, you know, the, 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 these two young men were taken out. So family members had to come and take these young men out. Because the people who were sanctified and, you know, they could not touch any dead bodies. They could not touch those dead bodies, so they used the, the, the family, other family members, to come and remove the bodies from the temple. And so Moses commanded them that they should not go out from the door of the tabernacle. They have to stay in there. He said, "For lest you die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is with you." And they did according as. Can somebody explain that last uh, verse 7? Bishop, can you explain verse 7, sir? Well, I don't have it with me, but I call it how you read it. It means that when the anointing oil is upon you, mean you are designated to do things on behalf of God. Yes. Right? So if you go out of the tabernacle, where, and it is in the tabernacle that God uses you to perform the rituals for his holiness. Mm -hmm. And remember also that the priests are always celebrating the glory of God in the human form, in the man form. You know, so we are um, having that anointing upon us. We cannot break that vow to go outside to attend to that which God has dealt with himself in wrath. So we, uh, it's also like Aaron uh, recognizing the value of the anointing, recognizing the, 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 the ministry that he has called to and how solemn it is before God. He had to hold his peace and say nothing because guess what? Although in his heart he would feel sorry to see that that happened, but he had to hold his peace. He cannot vow his personal opinion because it is God's will to destroy evil. Because if evil come and set up in the tabernacle, guess what? It's going to multiply itself and it's going to break down the holiness of God. So that anointing upon us give us the, the solid judgment to do that which is right to please God and to glorify God in whatever he does. That's the anointing oil. Thank you, Bishop. And so, so the anointing oil for the church today would be the Holy Spirit. Yes, in the spirit form, symbolically, it was what we would use, but spiritually, it is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. Who anoints us. In, yes, which indwells us that cause us to live daily a holy and a righteous life before the Lord. 
Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, any more comments? Any more? Yeah, I know you didn't. You know you didn't get to Acts chapter five, but I, I, I noted it earlier. You know when when Ananias and his wife Sapphira mm -hmm. went home to Peter, the fact that yeah. they mm -hmm. stole the possession of their land. And we're talking about specifically the New Testament church, and they had gone in there. I think that the intentions were good, number one. And number two, they actually thought that they were, they were lying to Peter. And Peter told them, listen, you're not lying and, and, and to us, you're lying unto the Holy Spirit. And we know that both of them actually lost their lives. So it shows you in, in, in the presence of God, we, we have to be mindful and conscious of what we say and what we do. Yes, yes, Pastor Brian. But that, 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 lie, it, it's still a lie, is still a sin. That, that's basically what I'm alluding to. Yes, and, and, and stealing because they, they sold the property which was belonging to them and they lied by saying we sold it for X amount and this is what it was. And so, you know, so God deals with sin as sin is. God does not compromise and God does not play around. And so one of the things that we have to be careful of is how we see God. We don't see him as just another man upstairs, as, you know, our everyday talk of our own town is. Oh, he's just a little man. He's just a little, same little man upstairs. Or he's just a man upstairs. But we, as children of God, we want to have a different mindset and see God as a holy and a righteous God. A God who is a God of love, a God of compassion, but a God of judgment. And a God who is to be feared. So God bless you, beloved one, this morning. And I trust we, though sad the story is, but I trust we have learned something from it. We learned that God is no respecter of persons. And we also learned that the wages of sin is death. And sin has consequences. And we have to be very careful of what we do. God bless you. Praise the Lord. At this time, I'm going to ask our deacon, please dismiss our Sunday school and give thanks for our day's offering. Shall we bow our heads? Most righteous and eternal Father, we come before your presence another time just to give you thanks and just to give you praise and just also to come and learn more about you, dear Father. It's not too much to know and to delve into your word because your word, as the Bible declares, is true. Father God, I want to thank you for the Sunday school teacher this morning. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you for the able way in which she, she spoke to us through you. And you spoke to us through her, dear Father. And Father God, we, we, we hope and we pray that, dear Father, we could apply these words these um, words of wisdom dear father to our daily lives father and and let us let us not take things for granted dear father and be presumptuous in our doings our actions our deeds our thoughts but be mindful that there is a, a lord and savior that hears and watches and knows our thoughts and our deeds and help us to also be, be mindful that there are consequences for our actions. There are consequences for our sins. Father God, thank you so much for this lesson. I pray, that, dear God, that you will bless our, our Sunday school teacher. Pour, pour out back on her, dear God, what she has poured out upon us this, this morning. And I pray, dear Father, that you will undergird her with your strength continually, continuously, dear God. I pray also for the Sunday school that's about, that's, um, offering that's about to be collected. I pray that you will bless it and use it for the sanctification and the furtherance of your work here on earth. These mercies and all we ask. 
Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, praise God. God. Praise the Lord. At this time, I hand the service now to our pastor in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.